what we're really talking about, the real starting point for this, um, this uh, series of videos is modern education. So there were these other precursors, but what modern education does, which had never been done in human history before, um, and it's, by the way, very, very recent. I mean, it's really mass institutionalized education happens in the mid 19th century, roughly, right? So the idea that everybody has to go to school, they all become part of this institution, um, uh, um, and some of them, if they're lucky, go on to college and university, and they have um, buildings in every neighborhood. They have administrative structures where there's a principal. They have teachers who uh, do their things, rules about turning up on time and leaving on time, timetables. Uh, all of these institutional things really don't take shape until the mid 19th century, which in terms of human history is the day before yesterday. It's incredibly recent. And with those come peculiar intra, um, uh, curriculum forms. So programs, you know, courses, um, uh, syllabi. And what syllabi did really in the first instance is they just, they were a list of things that needed to be, that needed to be covered in, 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 in the curriculum. So the state said, okay, we're gonna make mass institutionalized education for everybody. And that therefore everybody needed to learn a certain level of math. Everybody learn, need, need to, to learn to read and write. Um, and what you're gonna do in grade whatever or year whatever, you were gonna do this. And the state prescribed what was going to happen uh, through these institutions of modern schooling. Uh, these were these first, these were these curriculum forms that evolved at that time. But also what evolved is a number of peculiar pedagogical discourses. Never before in human history had there been things like textbooks. Now, in fact, the textbook as a form began to emerge in about the 17th century, but it didn't become something which was something that everybody had to experience until about the mid 19th century. Um, Another form which 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 uh, which evolved was the idea of the teacher lecture. It might be the professor, um, it might be the teacher at the front of the room. So the teacher comes to the school with a pile of knowledge, and they are going to speak to that knowledge in order to convey that knowledge to the learner. Now, in fact, that's also an unusual form. There were no lectures in um, uh, in Plato's Academy. It was dialogical. Um, you know, it was the, in the form of what's now called Socratic dialogue. Um, uh, there weren't lectures in that form in the, the universe of the Mandarin um, uh, and so on. Um, and also what emerges is things like classroom discussions, which are classic kind of, kind of um, modes where the teacher asks a question, the kids all put up their hands, one person's picked out to give the answer. The teacher says, yes, that's right. So these are very, very characteristic discursive forms. Now, each of these discursive forms, these, you know, what I call these things is the microdynamics of pedagogy is, is distinctive and unusual. It's never really happened before in quite this way in human history. So the textbook, which summarizes the world and tells you stuff you've got to remember, the lecture where it's spoken, told stuff you've got to remember, classroom discussion where you give the right answer and the teacher reinforces you. These are all um, 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 done, um, done, uh, forms of pedagogy, pedagogical modes, which in their microdynamics are, are new and unusual in the world. We also have the rise of a lot of informal learning. So to learn classical literacy in the modern day, you went and learned phonics rules, you went and read readers, um, you did comprehension tests. But who was ever taught how to uh, operate in school, that is? Who was ever taught how to operate with the dis in the strange discursive world of Facebook or the strange discursive world of Twitter? Um, uh, how much of computer coding have people learnt by immersing themselves in coding um, as opposed to going and doing a course on it. So what's interesting is a lot of what we're learning in the modern world, we're not learning in formal settings. That's disruptive, that's a big change. And one of the words to describe this is ubiquitous learning. Now the ubiquitous learning can be um, learning which happens um, online, formal education through online programs or homeschooling or whatever. Um, you can actually take it out of the institution. You could take it out of this defined time and space and do formal learning elsewhere. But also ubiquitous learning is a lot of informal learning where we're looking up help, uh, help um, 
uh, menus, where we're searching for things, we're working things out for ourselves. We don't have a teacher leading us into this because there are many ways in which we can teach ourselves. That's a big change. And the other thing is um, the, the traditional idea of learning being something where, okay, I'm gonna sit in school, learn a whole lot of stuff, and go off and be something in the world based on what I've learned. So you learn first, then you go off and apply it. Well, you know, there's a lot of just-in-time learning now where things change in the world. We need to be learning in the workplace all the time. So um, the idea of this separation between a time for learning and a time for living and working, uh, that's not the case anymore. So these, um, tr these institutional uh, separations, these institutional forms um, of in learning communities, learning institutions, all those boundaries are getting blurred now and we've got to ask questions about, okay, what do we do? How do we... How do we rebuild this world in a world which is relevant to our learners, given all the changes that are going on? And then in the area of curriculum, um, you know, the classical syllabus just spelled out the content. You've got to learn this algebra, this history. It was just a list of contents. But now we have stuff which is standards-based, which is much more open-ended. So you've got to meet a, a general standard, but the content you uh, you use in that standard may be, may be very, very different. And also we might have school developed curriculum where there's a lot of latitude for the teachers to build curriculum which meets those standards. And in the realm of pedagogy, um, all those discursive forms, textbooks and lectures and classroom Q&A sessions, all of those are being changed around too with active learning, personalised learning, collaborative learning, computer media mediated learning. There's a lot of stuff going on where the shape of pedagogy or the classical modern shape of pedagogy is changing quite dramatically.